Hello everyone and thank you for joining another One Plus One episode. I am your host, Joylin Paris. Today you will notice that I have Mr. Keith Howard on the show once again. For the past couple of weeks I've been taking so much heat because people want to know where's the rest of the interview? When are you going to do the rest of the interview? Where's part two? I'm sure you've been having the same reaction from people, right? Yes, no, maybe? Yes, <laughs> well, you know. A lot of people been asking me about Yeah. It. So, you know, I'm a woman, of, a woman of my word. I like to think so at least. So, here we are back in the, I, the IKTV studio to finish off what we started. Um, for those of you who might have missed part one, this is Mr. Keith Howard. And he's a, a part of a lot of things, but he's more so known for being the proprietor of uh, KP Marine Limited and he is one of our successful Vincentian entrepreneur that's what I am going to classify him as as much as he might disagree with me he's the dreamer um, but I'll let him speak for himself and first we're gonna start off by asking um, being that you are a young entrepreneur how how were you able to get your staff to respect you and see you as being the boss like how hard was that you want people to to see your vision and execute things the way that you would like them so how do you get that respect from persons who are older than you oh simple mm -hmm. simple you respect people and people respect you simple as that so? <laughs> yeah hmm. you know because um when you look at people you have to just and not people anything any human being in the world in the world or any living creature or not you respect it mm -hmm. if you have a dog and you respect the dog the dog will never bite you you sure i'm sure i think i need to <laughs> tell my dog that <laughs> <laughs> he don't understand so that. You, you, you you treat people <laughs> the way you yeah. want to be treated and and everything will work in place one of the things is that when you meet people you try to understand and you go to the level that people can understand you. Okay. For example, when I employ someone, if I employ a cleaner, I will tell that cleaner, you come here, and I don't want it you leave in my business as a cleaner. You should look to leave this business as the owner, not as the manager or the boss, right. the owner. <coughs> so you, you know, because one of the things that I never employ anyone to do anything that I can't do. So, if today the cleaner don't come, you I'll clean. take the room and clean yeah. my place. You know, some know? people think, you know, oh, I'm too proud to do that kind of thing. That's not no, for me. That, so that's the way you work with people. And then when you show people that, and when a cleaner comes and says, I have the room sweeping, you know, she respect yeah. me too. So I respect her. She, so I, I respect her job because I expect her to do a good job or him right. to do a good job. So I will do it better. Okay. To make sure that they do it. Okay? Yes. So that's how I get, I gain the respect of anybody, older, younger, or in between. So um, how did you know uh, that, okay, I need to employ an accountant or I need to employ uh, marketing manager like how did you know exactly who you needed for the job okay now everybody in the world is here to do something for a reason mm -hmm. right now people develop skill or they go to school they learn different um, skills if I'm looking for an accountant then you simply put an ad vote out for an accountant when you, you do an interview, then you select the person that you think is right for the job, right? That's how it works, simply. Now, an accountant at my store should be able to fit themselves anyway in the business. And that is how I, I groom them. Mm -hmm. I say, I want you to come here, but I don't want you to be an accountant. If, for example, my manager is sick, I want you to manage. So you have to try to learn the whole business. Okay. So everybody, from cleaner right up to general manager, will learn how to right. do everything in the business. That's, yeah. Um, at the at the very very beginning, did you, you know, have so much drive and so much passion that you were 
so you were so consumed in the work that you were like, okay, I can do everything, or you tried to do everything and not have to hire somebody to do it so that you could save up some extra money? Yes, you try to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I think, yes, that is a normal in a, in a human, that they try to do everything. Because you think that nobody can do it the way you can do it. Right. Right? But as you grow older and you learn, you understand, no, it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. Then you have to assign people to special tasks. Because, let's face it, when I started first, I, had, I started at Edinburgh built a shed in my parents' yard, right? And I had two young guys working with me, fixing outboard engines. When you're doing something and you must put your best foot forward, you do it right, you do it properly. I start fixing outboard engines in Edinburgh, far from the sea. Then I had guys who coming with trucks and pushing cats from bottom tongue down at the sea in um, Rose Place in, in Kingston right up to Edinburgh to fix the engine. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I was fixing the engine good. They were happy with the way I do it. Right. So you always put your best foot forward. Sure. So when you start a business, start it right. Next thing you do is that you make sure you train people to help you. So I was the teacher to begin with. I taught my guys how to fix an engine so that they can help me, so I can fix more engines, right? You reach to a point where the guys can fix the engine, but you need to get qualified people to carry, out, to carry the business forward. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I did is that the first thing I did is to start sending my guys abroad to, to be trained. It was rough that time, it was expensive for me, but I knew in the long run it will pay off if I do that. The first guy I sent to Miami to be trained at Outboard Marine Corporation. Outboard Marine Corporation, it was the, the, um, the manufacturer of uh, outboard motors called Johnson Avenue, mm -hmm. right? And I was the distributor in St. Vincent for that product. They offered me to train my technicians free. Wow. <laughs> right? Because we were selling their engines. Right. My, I had to pay all the expenses for the hotel, for the traveling, and everything else. Right. Mm -hmm. The first guy in 19, um, I think in 1990, I sent to train. At that time, it cost me $13,000. I didn't even have the money. But you know what? I find the money and invested in, in that guy. But weren't you worried though that you would send these persons off to be trained and then they might just stay over there and find a job right where they are? You think that was about not it. a worry? Of I yours? think about it, but I never worry. Okay. I never worry about anybody who I sent away to mm -hmm. train. Never. I never sign a contract with them. I never wow. make them sign a contract. I just say, look. I sit them down and I talk to them. I say, I'm sending you to train. When you come back, if you want to walk out and leave me, mm -hmm. you're free to do that. But looking back now, and with the experiences that you would have gained, do you think that you would have done something differently? Would no, you have done I a contract? Do you no, would still I'm have still doing it okay. right now. Mm -hmm. Because I, last year, I had two guys sent about to train. Since then, I send guys to Atlanta. I send guys to Miami, right. to Martinique, and Yamaha have a training program in the Caribbean now, which we send them to Antigua every year to train, upgrade. And I do. I never sign a contract. I say, you're free to go. And I mean, I had guys who just walk off with me. Yes. Yeah. But I never worry about it. Yeah. They come back and ask me for a job again. <laughs> and today, I am proud to see that one of them is running my Chisel. operation in St. Lucia today okay. because I'm, I, I take him over there now and he's running my shop in St. Lucia. One of the same guys, the very first guy that I trained, he is now running a St. Lucia operation. That's good. That's very good. Okay, um, so what are the essentials that someone needs to become an entrepreneur? Other than the obvious, which is money. Um, Some startup capital. You have to love people. 
I have to love what you do and love people. Mm -hmm. Because the best investment you can make is in human, the human resource. True. Right? In any facet of in life, not any. just business. Right? Right. And, uh, you know, you have to treat the people well. You know? Money, you must be thinking about money. If I tell you I don't think I love money, I love money. <laughs> I want to be rich. I ain't rich yet. But I want to be rich one day. I want to be financially secure. So I'm working towards that. Okay. I want to, you know, live a good old life and sit down and look back and be happy. Have a good... I see, you know, I see people who had wealth in St. Vincent, die as paupers, and I don't want to be like that. Oh, okay. And that is one of the driving forces. I'm working hard to secure a financial future for me and my family. So what's the ultimate goal for KP Marine? Like, how far do you want to see KP Marine going before you retire? <laughs> I don't think you'll ever retire, but let's just say. <laughs> now, I want KP Marine to continue as long as it could. Now, one of the things I sit down with, with one of my lawyer friends one day and I said, you know, I want this to happen to my business. I want to see my son carry on this and I'm educating him now. I will pay for his university. Whatever the case may be, I want to keep him in there. And that lawyer sat down, you know what he told me? He said, yes, Mr. Howard, you have all the right things to say about that. But you know you can't manage from the grave. <laughs> When True. you're dead, you're done. You're done. You're gone. Whatever <laughs> you leave on this earth, what your son or whoever they want to do, they will do. Yep. So don't think about it that way. You just do what you have to do. Now make your preparation, yes, but you cannot manage from the grave. Yeah. And I say, okay, fine, I understand that. So what I have to do now is do what I have to do. Yeah. Keep him real, I want to see. Be a household name in St. Benson, probably. I want my... The main customer of Keeping Marine is fishermen. I love fishermen. They are one of the best people to deal with. You go down bottom town, they cost you everything, but when Jesus Christ, <laughs> came, when Jesus Christ came into this world, who, where he went to? <laughs> the fishers, of course. Exactly. <laughs> fishermen were he. He mm -hmm. was a fisher. He tell them, make, fish, make them fishers of fishers men. Fishers of men. Right? Mm -hmm. So he went straight on the bay side. And he deal with those people. And these people are who I deal with every day on a day to day basis. Okay. These are my main customers. And I want to see them continue that. I want mm -hmm. to give them a good service because they go out there in the sea and I don't know if they're coming back. It's rough out yeah. there. And they're doing a good service. And I try to maintain their engine so that they could come back home. And that is my big satisfaction I get. Okay. Um, would you advise an entrepreneur to have someone who is a business mentor, someone who can coach them in business. Did you have such a person? Business mentors are important, very, very important. Mm -hmm. And I had several mentors in my life. Right. And I didn't realize they were my mentors until right now, then you understand what they were telling you. You know, I had people, and I'll call one name, he's dead, Matt Neil Chapman. He was one of my mentors. And you know, he would sit down hours and talk to me about business, how to do business, how he faced it as a young man, what the problems he had, and it were numerous. Sometimes you think you're going through. Sometimes I think I'm going through too. Would, would we survive? But the mentors would help you and help you to understand how to survive. Some mentors, um, some people look at people in the society as mentors, but trust me, they are not. You have, you have mentors and you have people who pretend to be mentors and they don't really like it. I know that. I experience it. Mercy, Lord, mercy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little about entrepreneurship in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Do you think there's room for improvement? Do you think we're okay where we are? No, it is always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, it, or, I mean, life goes on, you must improve. The world changing every day. Yeah. Um, the way people think business. For example, long ago, you want a loan. 
you walk into a bank once you establish and you're going in your business and you'll tell the loans manager look I'm bringing in some engines next week my overdraft will go over by fifty thousand dollars could I bring them in he says sure go ahead you write that up and you're gone it's different now if you're going to tell about loan officer now you do you can't do that <laughs> he telling you okay I have to send this to head office you are now a number and not a human being you're not Keith Howard anymore you're a number such and such and when they, that go to head office, if head office can justify how you're going to pay back this money, that's it. You have to look for something else. You know? So business is different, changing. Life is changing, business is changing. Mm -hmm. And we have to change with it. So now, you go, you have to make sure you have everything right. Your proposal, how you're going to pay back plan. this money, mm -hmm. everything. Not a business plan, but you only need an extension to go forward. Okay. And you have to have everything right, otherwise than that. When the computer says this number don't match, that's it. They reject you. <laughs> and it's not a human factor anymore. It's not the human anymore in, in, in its, its systems in place to take care of that. And you have to just abide with it, you can't change it. So what do you think persons, business persons like yourself can do to assist the young people out there who might be considering doing business other than the fact that you're doing this television show right now with me oh, well you see um is it what you can do i mean okay what i will do every dollar i make in st vincent i invest it back into some kind of business so i can employ people, More people. Okay. that is what i do I didn't put my money in British America to get through the time. I didn't put it anyway. <laughs> I invest it back in the country. One of the things that is hard in this country is that one is the problem you get. The government is not concerned about us business people. They don't care. Government don't care about us. For example, if you want, you, you're, you're a businessman, a local businessman in St. Vincent, what incentive the government gives to you? If a foreign businessman come in here tomorrow, he get tax free, 15 years tax holiday, he get duty free concession and everything. And he employ less people than I. What the government to give in to me or to any local businessman who start up a business and employ people? Nothing. What they want from us? Taxes. Soon as they make a first dollar, the tax man on your back. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> so there should be some form incentive for local people yeah and if local people get these incentives that the foreign businessman get then we can, the, the country will move faster forward because we'll be able to invest more and more and this is the problem and the foreign investor always get priority over the local investor although he will employ less people take the graves company the employ thousands of people they are local you know? Yeah. And uh, what what incentive the government to give them? The other thing is that you as a local businessman always under pressure. You know? And young, as we're talking about young entrepreneur here, when you get inside of that business and you start, you'll understand the pressure that I talking about. For example, I remember Oli as a distributor for a product. I brought in some engines. Every time you sell an engine, you have to warrant it. It's on the warranty from the manufacturer. All right? So once I had a problem with a powerhead failure, the company sent back a new powerhead to replace it. Now the customs, you bring everything and you show them that. Instead of they trying to help you to get it good, you have to pay duty on that powerhead. You know? And I remember that I had that issue with the customs and the, I, I spoke to the, I went to the, the, um, the finance director of the country and he looked at it and he said, no, this is shopping list, you have to, you have to um, give the man the power head. And they gave me. Eventually. But no, they gave me. But they, I didn't realize that in a couple of days or weeks, that that man was going to retire. And the customer wrote me after he gone and said, I have to come back and pay the duty. 
that is how ha that is how hard it was on wow. me and on business mm -hmm. people. On the other hand, one time I had um, you know the the customer always hold up the goods. My young and I trying to get some goods out the way out. They hold it up because they have to go to the end. And you know what? One businessman told me, he said, go to them and tell them, show them where you had this hole up. He said, I, look at me, I get my goods out because um, without paying the warehouse rent. I went to the port manager. Port manager physically ran me out of his office and said, I'm going to pay the money. But he had just given another businessman the same concession because you're young and they look at you as a... That's Nothing. exactly what I was, uh, what I was and saying. And this is how mm -hmm. everybody, you know, all young entrepreneurs or all young people who are aspiring to business are being the treated mm -hmm. in this country. Nobody, yeah. and you see, nobody tried to help them. And then you come in a position now that some of the same people come into you and looking for jobs. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, this is what is for. Because the table always done. We never hear forever. And that is why you have to treat people as human beings and not as anything that you could think you want to treat them. Yeah. But well, what kept you going? I mean, you, you're running, you have people running you out of their office and <coughs> all of this drama taking place and you never gave up, right? So no, what kept you going? Because I understand, I understand life and I understand what people think. And you remember and the five things your father told you. Exactly. <laughs> and I always remember, I always think positive. You know, sometimes right. you go home and you see it is so bad. You say, why am I in business? I better just sleep and go. Yeah. I could go anywhere and get a job. But you stick there and you stick it out. Because, you know, <clears throat> when you realize that what are you doing in the country to help young people or people in general, then all you have to do is to forget about everything else that people do and see mm -hmm. and move forward. Honestly, straightforward with people. And you don't have to worry. Okay, so I, don't, I know you don't like when we're running out of time, but I'll just ask you just a few more questions. Um, one of them being, how do you know that what you're providing is exceptional something that your customers are enjoying and would make them want to come back for more okay you get feedback from your customer i never advertise my business keep marine on any television any radio, radio station no way <laughs> service give people service and that's all you have to do good service and you don't have a problem be honest with people Give them good prices, give them good service, and they will always come back. One will tell the other, will tell yeah. the other. Word of mouth is the best form of advertisement today. Now, the world is changing, so I have to change with the world. Yep. Now, I have to reach another market. You have to reach the, 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 the younger people. You have to. Facebook. So then <laughs> you have to start tweaking your yeah. thing. And then you might have to do other things. Because you know, the younger people now is looking for enjoyment, they're looking for everything else, and if you can provide it, then you have to go the way that they're thinking. So I might have to end up in Facebook and Twitter and whatever <laughs> it is. And uh, what I did, I start putting things in place. So I ain't know much about these things I do. Yeah. But I employ somebody exactly. already. Exactly. I have a, a IT man who is looking into what I want to be done. And Soon, you, know, you might yeah. see me on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, the, you know, I have a web page already that you made, so, you know, these things will come as, you time know, goes time on. goes along. Okay, fair enough. And what do you think are the key qualities of somebody who's, who's competent enough in your mind to be an entrepreneur? Are there certain qualities that you think somebody should have? And you're like, yes, that person definitely has what it takes to be an entrepreneur somebody else you would look at and say mm -mm, no that person definitely can't make it you must first have a, a goal a long-term plan a long-term goal if you want to be an entrepreneur and um, you have you're not you know you know not thinking that way for example a young man he comes out and he want to be um, an entrepreneur 
he wants to run a little business. Okay? You have to make a lot of sacrifices. Now, the first thing you have to do is make sure that you, whatever you want to do is Something makes sense. Enough? Makes sense. Okay. It's viable. Mm -hmm. Then, when you start running that business, you have to remember that the business is not yours. The business is the business. You're you. You're working for business because you have to make yourself a part of the business. So in other words, you don't go in the business and say, okay, I make a $1,000 today, I want uh, a car down there, and I'm buy a car for $500, and I'm happy, I have a car. No, it don't work like that. Leave the car out, leave the nice time out. That money should be reinvested. There will, time, there will come the time when you want a car for the business, and then you can have to buy a car. Leave the people money there, the business money. And go to the bank and look for a loan so that you can pay for the car over time. But leave that business money to run the business. That is what it's for, to run the yeah. business. So let that money run your business. You have to grow and grow it. So a, a young entrepreneur looks you know, for these simple things and you know, he can be successful. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. That's right. Everybody that's can. That's the reality. Right. Can. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. um, what about persons who are looking to be more employable, mm -hmm. right? Um, what kind of qualities do you look for when you're looking for human resources to make your business better? Okay, the first thing you look for in anybody is to look them straight in the eyes and, you know, to ask them if they're honest. Right? You need honesty. Yeah. You know, be honest with people. Right? Um, if you, if you, you're looking for people, you, when you interview them, you, you start picking out things with them, you know, asking them questions that you think you could pull out some of the qualities of them, right? And then, you know, you want to know people can work in your business and, you know, put in a little overtime. And don't, you see, one of the things that people look for immediately for and sometimes you can't give them wrong it's money if they work one second over they want overtime <laughs> and if they come in late then you must overlook that right so you look for, you, you start you look for these qualities in people look for the way even the way they dress and come to work and you, you look at it the way they dress when they come for interview you know, you look at the application, and you know, now you see an application coming because we see them hundreds every day. And the way they write, you know, you know, well, this person can't be ready. Even 11 college students, they write an uh, application just like how they're writing on their Facebook. <laughs> you is you, and all Hello these well. kind of things. <laughs> yeah, you know, these kind of things. Yeah. And you read them, you say, wait, but they sit in your language now, you know. <laughs> These people might be good workers and good yeah. entertainers, you know, but you know, you have to look at you have to work internationally. Right? I represent companies that are international companies. I have to send off reports to them all over the world. Yeah. And you have to make sure that your people can do it right. So you look for the quality, the best quality that you can get out of people and bring them in. Yes. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave the floor to you now. Anything, any last words that you would like to give? This is your opportunity. Any experiences or any advice that you would like to leave before we say goodbye to our audience today? <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm open to, I mean, young people. Um, right now, I want to work with the college so that the college can offer more technical college and the level college, whatever, so that they could um, get more students involved in uh, the mechanics and the sciences because I think this is the way that we have to go. Today, the world is driven technologically. Yeah. It is computerized driven. Um, all our outboard motors now are computerized. It's no more that the fishermen can sit down on the beach and strip down an engine. It would not work. You have to understand it. What I'm telling the fishermen every time is leave the people engine alone. Get your little boy, your little girl to understand how a computer works and they can troubleshoot the engine. So 
I want the young people and um, to come up. For example, again, you know, I go to the college and, and try to get them to get involved in. There's no program in the college for the marine business. The marine business is developing so fast in St. Vincent. All these boats you're running up in them is marine engineering. Really. They have no program for outdoor motor, a motorcycle. Look at what happened in St. Vincent. Mm -hmm. Look at Independence Town, the hundreds of motorcycles on the road. We need to get train our people on those on hand training to get them to take over. Because I know mechanics and the an engineer is no more a, a, a job that you get a guy who drop out of school. <laughs> no more like yeah. that. Right? You have to have a degree in computer technology to be working on an engine now. So these are the areas that I want to see develop. And uh, with my little bit, I'll try to help as much as I can to help develop. And uh, any young business in, uh, man or boy who think he like to know more about business, he can come and see me anytime. So what happened to the girls? I, human being, no problem, <laughs> anybody. <laughs> so, you know, that is what I like to leave with uh, the young people. Thank you so much for being a part of this program and I would only hope that other business persons who are looking at the program would step up to the plate, come on the show and share your story so that other young people can be inspired just like I am, even though I'm the one giving the interview. Um, I'm pleased of course to be a part of this and I look forward to another interview so see you next time. Bye. Thank you madam.